Hi guys, welcome back. Um, we left off last time with me fighting the tension on my wheel to try to spin very thick yarn. Um, wasn't working and we ended with my bobbin breaking. Put my project down for a night. It's next morning, I've had time to think. Think I've got a plan. I'm gonna use my too thin yarn that I have to make like a half size model of the hat just to make sure I have the pattern down correctly. And then, I was thinking about other historical methods of making yarn. I have this guy. Can't believe I forgot, forgot about this. Okay, I don't have an orifice on this. I don't have to worry about whether or not my yarn fits through the orifice. I don't have to worry about tension. Doesn't matter. I do all of it. I just use this, my drop spindle, to actually do the spinning. And to fix my drafting issues, I'm gonna take my fiber and I'm gonna pre-draft it to the thickness I need so I don't have to draft and spin at once and try to make a consistent string. I think that's gonna work better. I think I'll be happier with that result rather than using my yarn that I've already made on my broken bobbin that isn't right. I think I'll be happier in the long run if I do it properly instead of trying to make not the correct thing work. So that's the plan. Hopefully it works. We'll see. It should. I always say my plan should work. better. Not great, but better, and I think I will get usable yarn out of this. So my drop spindle is not big enough for this weight of yarn. It's too light for me to hold it and spin it and let it spin. I have to manually spin it, which is fine. It'll take forever, but it'll work. Hopefully not too long forever. So I'm going to keep working on that. It's going to be filling up a lot of uh, this, uh, this spindle over and over. Um, I think it'll work, and I think we are on our way to proper thickness of yarn. Thickest yarn I've ever spun, and thickest yarn I've ever worked with. So bulky. Um, I also don't think that one spindle, one of my drop spindles worth is enough. But I am going to wet finish this in hopes that it fixes some of my bulky spinning unevenness because I am not practiced at it. Um, and then I will see how it knits up. I'm probably going to have to make more. Um, but I don't know how much I need. So we'll start with this and see how it goes. Okay, I'm back from washing my yarn. This is from the drop spindle and I really don't think it's usable. It's overspun in some spots, underspun in others. It's not even. It is very bulky. But I don't I don't think it's usable. There's there's bits like this where it's just not not what you want. 
Um, however, because I was washing yarn, I decided to quick ply off that yarn that I had done before. Um, that I did on my wheel that I thought wasn't going to be thick enough just so I could get my bobbins back to use for something else. And it's actually a lot bulkier than I thought it was going to be. So I am thinking that I'm going to try to start knitting with this and just see what happens. See if I get close to gauge. Because it is bulkier than I thought. Probably still not quite bulky enough. But between the two options, this is definitely the better one. So I am going to cake this up, cast on, start knitting, and we'll see where it goes, how it goes. Okay, so what I'm doing is casting on using a provisional cast on. The original hat would have been knit on three DPNs using a fourth to knit with. I didn't want to go and make DPNs in a size 15 so I am just using my circulars and using a magic loop method. And then here I am adding stitch markers to mark where basically each individual needle would be if I were using DPNs so that I have all of my stitches evenly distributed and I know where to put increases and decreases. And then I realize that my gauge is much, much too loose for this yarn on these needles. So I am pulling everything out and dropping down a couple needle sizes to size 11s and starting everything over. And after starting everything over and deciding that I like where the gauge is for the yarn weight and the needle size, everything's all good, and I get a number of rows in, I realized that I had twisted my stitches around my needle when I joined in the round, so there's that permanent loop twist in my knitting so I have to start everything all over again. Okay, I've got the hat started now um, after about five attempts without twisting it so I actually ended up having to cast all my stitches on, knit a row, and then join in the round which is how I usually join in the round. I'm about two-thirds of the way up to the starting the crown um, I have the provisional cast on stitches down here on some scrap yarn so I can pick those up later. The yarn is working okay. I'm a little bit under gauge for what the sources say that this cap should be. However, just looking at the size of this as I knit it, it looks bigger than the size that the sources say it should be just like how long it is. So. I'm going to keep going and see how it turns out, just because at this point I want to finish this without starting over <laughs> again. So I think I'm going to check back in when I get all the way up to starting the crown decreases. Okay, here we are ready for the crown decreases to start. It should go fast since you decrease every round instead of every other like I'm used to on modern hats. Shouldn't take me long and then I will get back check in. It's done! I kind of got uh, excited to be almost done and carried away and stopped filming what I was doing. But it's done! I ran out of yarn to uh, make a button and put it on the top, so it's missing the button. But it's got its little loop, it's got all the right number of stitches and the decreases in the right spot, a little double brim, it's knit on both sides, it's decorative cast off edge. Looks pretty cute to me. I like it. Um, I have some laddering from my uh, stitch markers that I'm not too thrilled about, but not too bad. I thought that the brim decreases were interesting because they kind of 
don't make the typical spiral up the top that I see in a lot of modern hats that I knit. And you can see where it is because of the laddering. But not like the strong line of decreases. There's also a really awesome thing that I noticed about this hat when I was trying it on. But to explain it, I need to go on a tangent about what I used to do for work, why my hats drove me nuts, and then explain how the Monmouth cap actually seems to solve that problem. So I used to work as a cultural resource management archaeologist, which basically means that I would do surveys before building projects, which means that I was very often outside in the cold and the rain and the snow, walking around, digging holes, standing around, doing paperwork after digging a hole. And basically you need to be warm and prefer for it to be hot and sweaty, and then also then once you're hot and sweaty, stand around to do paperwork. So, I grab my two old work hats. This guy, have my double brim, oh I need to change that camera angle, I can't see my head. So I have this guy, he's got my double brim. The issue with him is he's slides down over my eyes and I can't fold up. This, if I get hot and want it off my ears, it won't stay up. This guy, I apologize for the eye searing orange. He gets pulled down and then has the usual standard flip up so that I have warmth over my ears. But then when you're digging a hole in the woods, you get really hot because you're working really hard. So you want the hat off your face and off your ears. So I end up pushing it back because modern hats, they, you, you can't flip this guy up again to get it higher and it does, if you try to pull the brim higher, it doesn't stay, it slides back down to that spot where it's supposed to be. And then if you forget to pull it back down over your ears, you're going to snag this stuff on a branch and lose your hat. Or, you know, you're sliding, pulling this down, flipping it down all day. It drives me nuts because I lose my hats constantly. Monmouth cap. With the way the double brim is knitted, it just flips up. Like if you get hot and you want your hat off your head, you just flip it up. And there's nothing on the top besides the button that would be there that's going to get snagged on a branch and yank off. Your hat's still staying on your head. This doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. When you get cold because you're standing around doing paperwork, or I suppose like I don't know, whatever 15th century men would have been doing, standing around your fishing boat, digging holes in the woods, I don't know, physical labor. You can flip back down. And then when you need to, you flip it back up. And this is just like the greatest thing ever. Like this might become my work hat. Also, can entirely loop this around, uh, button on my coat and not lose it. This is great. Not a lot about knitting to talk about there, but uh, this hat is uh, pretty awesome. Was not expecting to uh, recreate the Monmouth cap and decide that I have my new work hat. <laughs> so the knitting pattern for this guy is pretty simple. I'm going to put it down in the description box um, because I don't have a blog or anything to put it on. And I will list a couple of commercial yarns that I found going through my mom's stash that look pretty similar to what I spun for you guys in case you want to make your own and don't know how to spin yet. Like and subscribe if you liked this video and want to see me recreate some more. I think the next project I'm going to do is a Tudor flat cap and along the route with that one take a look at some evidence for how things respond in the Tudor era. Thanks for watching. Bye!